Kim here with Art Classes for Kids. And I'm here with Lily, making videos. Anyways, uh, today we will be doing a mixed media um, work of art. We're gonna be using all kinds of things. And today's project is inspired by the American contemporary artist named Fred Tomaselli. And here's an example of his work right here. And here's an example of what we'll be making inspired by his work. So, Lily, do you want to tell them the supplies you're going to need to gather? Yes. Okay, what so, do we got? So, the supplies that you'll need are some glue sticks, either a black foam board or, or just like a piece of black paper. Black cardboard. Or, and, Construction paper, not black cardboard. And if you have a piece of cardboard, yes. you could either paint on this cardboard or you could use this to back up the paper. Yes. And then you'll need some masking tape like we've done in the previous videos. But if it's your first time joining us, if you don't have the blue type, the tan type will or, work too. But you don't have to have um, do the masking tape. We just like to use it to leave it a nice clean finish at the end. Okay, so what also else? you'll need some colored pencils, some paints, you don't need this many, and you don't need this many colored pencils, but just choose what you have. And then you'll need some small, skinny paintbrushes, and some small leaves from like your backyard. Yeah, so you're gonna like go and, and some paper towels to wipe If you them. haven't already, you're gonna need to gather up some leaves, and if you do, then go ahead and put this video on Pause. I gotta get some leaves for the project. Now I'll go get some more over here. Because now you can pause it because we are no longer doing live videos. Now we're uh, pre-recording them and posting them daily, giving you the ability to pause if you yes. need to. Go get we your are supplies. doing it daily anytime be between 12 noon and 4. We'll be posting, but probably yes. closer to 12 each day. Yes. Yeah, and every day Sometime is a different in the project. afternoon. Every day, different project. Every day, different materials, but we usually use a lot of these basics. Yes. So what else so do you want to tell So where can they uh, get all of our basic supplies that we use in most of our videos? Well, if you don't already have these, it might be tough because of the fact that a lot of stores are closed. Even though we've got Target and Walmart, they might not have everything or they might be sold out. So what you can do is you can go to our website, which is www.artclassesforkids.com where we have links to amazon.com products that we have selected the project or all the supplies that we use the most and if you buy them through there you can get them delivered to your home and uh, you would also be helping support us because every time you click and buy something from our site you'll get it uh, delivered by Amazon uh, but you'll also be helping us by a small contribution of that money or a small uh, rewind a small bit of that money will be contributed to our efforts to make these videos free so it's a really cool thing it's one way that you could show support show us a little love and uh, if you need anything we've got these all these products are on our website for you to you know choose from so with that in mind, we also have a little account called Kofi, and that's where at the end of the video, if you liked what you did and you want to make a, a small contribution, you can do that too. Yes, and also while you're watching this video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and click the notifications button, the bell icon, if so you can see more of our cool art videos coming up. Yeah, so let's get right to it. Yes. Okay. So, so 
Well, the first gonna, thing that you're gonna do is prepare is, your paper. Yes, prepare your paper or, or board. board, whatever. Uh, so I've see? already, I've yes. already taped mine like this, but Lily's gonna show you how to use the tape on hers. Yes. So how you're gonna use your masking tape is, let me move some stuff out of the way. And while I I'm doing this, oh, there you go. and while I'm doing this, you can tell them some facts about our artist. Yeah, well, also I can show you that if you're using just black paper. You can still do it. It's just that having a collage of leaves on top of it and paint is a little heavy for this paper. So when I'm done, I like to mount it to a piece of cardboard. This is what we do in all our classes. When they leave one of our classes, their art is mounted on a board and wrapped in cellophane. And when they take it home, they just put it up on their wall and it looks kind of faux framed. So what I'm doing is I'm going to make some little tape loops. And you Ooh. know what a tape loop is, right? It's where you take a, a piece of tape, a piece of tape like this, and you take a couple inches, you roll it where the sticky side's out, and then that presses down and it holds it in place. So I have a couple extra pieces of tape here. I'm gonna put six of them. I usually put like about four, but today I'm gonna do six. So I have it taped like this, and this is the side that's gonna touch the paper. And I'm gonna put it here. And while I do the project today, Lily will be doing hers on the table. And I'll be holding mine up and showing you how to do it as I hold it up. So that you can get both views of how to do it. Oh, our little example. Here, I'm gonna bring it right. I might need a tape loop for that. So, what I am doing here is I am lining the paper in our blue masking tape that I have. And um, I'm doing this so that it leaves a nice clean finish. And it also gives it, like if you really fill up your space in between, it looks really cool to have just that fresh black outline. Yes, so also, so I've done that in two sides. And also you don't want to leave some a um, piece of tape here and fold it around because then it would be hard to um, peel it again. So I just rip that off and so it's nice and clean like that. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll so continue she's got, with my other side. She's sides. got two more sides to go. So while she's doing that, what I want you to do is I want you to pick a few colors. The first thing I want you to pick is the color of your tree trunk. It's going to be a skinny, pretty skinny tree. So, uh, whatever color you like the most. Here I have a pink trunk. There it's brown. I think I'm gonna go with this turquoise blue color trunk. But I'm not using that much paint and I don't wanna make a big mess and have more to clean up if I don't have to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my small brush and I'm gonna shake this up really good. But I'm, I'm not actually not sure if you're using these craft acrylics. We use these a lot with kids because they're inexpensive and uh, kids in my class tend to go through a lot of paint. Kids in my class love paint and sometimes they are a little too generous when they're pouring the paint. So if I had tube paints, they might squirt out half the tube, you know? So I've been using these for years and they work great for what we're doing. So I just take off the lid and in the lid, I have paint and I don't need that much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dip my paintbrush into this. Lily used a just about ready, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So once you get yours taped, if you do choose to tape it, then you're going to pick out a color of paint that you're gonna use for your tree trunk. Then I'm gonna hold this up and I'm gonna go to the middle oh. of the bottom of my Woo. I'm going to the middle bottom of my paper and I'm going to go up, 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 oh. up, up till I get to a skinny line like that. Oh, and also, if you have long sleeves like me, don't forget to roll up your sleeves because this paint is acrylic paint and it will not come out of your clothes. And I mean will not come out of your clothes. So, when you pull up your sleeves, at least when you reach over, you might not rub it accidentally in the paint. So that's a good reason. So I started out and it got kind of dry. 
So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm just gonna build up my tree. I'm gonna have mine go a little wide at the bottom and then get skinnier, skinnier, skinnier like this. You want it centered or you can do it this way where you, you could, could have do, do it horizontal and have your tree off to the side. It's up to you. So then I just fill it in with my paintbrush, nice and smooth strokes. I don't wanna have any goopy spots. It doesn't take that much paint. So remember, I'm only grabbing a little paint out of the lid because I don't need much. And the first thing you do is you're building your trunk. You want it nice and solid. So if you have some dry spots, you know, you go back over those. So that's the beginning of my tree. There's my trunk. If you keep the paint on the tip of your paint bristles and never let it get all the way down to the metal, you're gonna be able to have a little more control and when you paint, the paint's actually gonna come out really easy. Looking good, Lily. And it's okay if you paint on the tape because oh, yeah. at the end we're gonna end up removing the tape so it won't show. Okay. If you run, we are using really little brushes because that's our only big area for the whole painting. Everything else is skinny lines. So if you run out of paint quick, it's because it doesn't hold that much paint. So just keep re-dipping to get to the, through the thick spots. Okay, you're about through the thick spots. And then flip that paintbrush over if you have more paint that's accumulated on the other side of the bristles. There you go. Okay, Lily's got a little ways to go and you might too at home. So, this artist does these really amazing things and his paintings are made with resin. If you don't know what resin is, it's like a liquid that when it gets hard, it looks like glass. What he does is he'll coat a, a layer of resin in a frame that's gonna be his painting. And then he'll add some things onto it. Like he'll put some, collage some things into it. Or sometimes he uses a lot of magazine pictures that he cuts out designs of. And then he'll put maybe some objects in it. And he'll then add another little layer of resin and then it'll dry. Then he'll add some more objects or little papers of things and collage that in. And then he'll add another layer of resin. So when you see these large paintings in person, it looks kind of 3D because you can see each layer, little papers or objects floating in between to create this visual effect that is just this amazing composition, but the closer you get, the more 3D it looks. It's really cool. So now that you're doing that, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make really skinny branches. So you're not gonna start at the very bottom. You're gonna start a little bit higher than the bottom. And this looks like the shape of a slingshot or a Y, like two arms reaching up, like when you sing YMCA. So what you're gonna do is make some skinny lines like that. And you're gonna make at least, uh, it depends on if you're doing a wide version or a tall version but I want you to give me a few more of those. Like at least three sets. So I'm going like this and when I end my paintbrush, to get the skinniest line possible, I'm only letting the tip of the bristles, the tip of the hairs of the brush touch my surface. So now I'm going like this and there's my, my, my tree branches so far, see? Yeah. It's like three sets of arms reaching up. Don't worry about making the ending pointy. The easiest way to make a point at the end is to lift it. Okay? So keep it going. So it's a little bit translucent. But it's still showing up great. Yes. And we're gonna have a lot going on afterwards, so. And give me one more set of branches. Okay, now we're gonna take each one of those branches and we're gonna put some baby branches on it. You can, if you wanna get a little more paint in the lid, just take it and shut it and then shake it again and then unscrew it like this. And then you'll have some more fresh paint. 
So for each of these, I'm going to add another branch. I'm gonna bring one off to the side like that. It's not so much upward direction, but a little up and sideways. You don't wanna go straight across horizontally. What you wanna do, Lily, is you wanna go up to the side. So now we're adding that extra branch on. The top one, don't make it as long because when trees get taller and taller, the highest point on the tree on the top is usually not the widest. So at the bottom, you're gonna go like that. So at the bottom of each one of those branches that I said reminds me of arms, you're gonna go out and up. And you're gonna lift at the end to get a skinny line. There you go, now do, do every one of those. Now, if you're, if you're new to painting and you're one of my younger students or one of my younger viewers, I'm gonna say that's plenty. But if you're more advanced, um, Lily, you can just do yours with two sets, okay? And I'm gonna show you what you can do if you're a little more advanced. If you're a little more advanced, you can add another set like this. You can go up like that. Now you get the skinny lines by just lifting up at the end. Okay, then I'm gonna do this side. Kinda like that. So you decide how much of a challenge you wanna take on and how much detail you want. You can also put a branch in here, and a baby branch here. So you can add more branches if you feel like, you know, you wanna have a lot of detail. So now I have that many branches to my tree and that's about all I'm going to do, okay? Or you can be like lilies and just keep it simple and have the main, the main trunk and then six main branches and then, uh, Another branch hooked to each one of those. Okay, you wanna to try to keep that pointy tip. Okay, so now we're not gonna be using that color anymore, but we don't really need any water because we're just doing one more thing. I just twirl my paintbrush to wipe it because I still want it pointy. If I smash it in, it's not gonna be pointy and I need skinny, skinny brushes and skinny brushes are hard to get or hard to keep skinny. You gotta just wipe them. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our little grass. To the bottom. So now I'm going to pick a grass color. So I'm going to put this one back and I think my grass color is going to be, ooh, uh, I'm going to pick two colors. I'm going to have pink and orange. So I'm going to shake up my pink. I'm going to open up the lid and now what I'm doing is I'm getting the pink and I'm starting on the blue taped area and every time I start a blade of grass I flick it so that I can get a point. So I'm gonna flick it, flick it, but I barely touch the paper. And that's how I can make it look like grass, where it's pointy. If not, it will just like look like freshly mowed grass where it's cut off on the ends. You got it, Lily. And you can make long pieces of grass yeah. or small pieces of yeah, grass. Yeah, they can be, and then I have them so close that they start to, to touch each other, okay? Yes. But you can go ahead across and do one, and then by the time you get back to do a second layer, it'll start to dry and it'll stick together and be more opaque. Yeah, and you can make them curve. Yeah, and if you're wondering what opaque means, it's the opposite of transparent, which is like see-through. So make them more it. solid. Exactly. Okay, so we're getting all our little blades of grass in. And then we'll do the other color. Yep, but I'm gonna do two layers of my first color, which for me, mine was pink. So I'm going back and adding more. Flick, flick, flick. So I've got one side, and I'm gonna go to the other and give it a second layer of pink grass. Oh, look, that color shows up so good on that. It's good. My pink isn't so opaque, but it's still, I think it's still looking good. 
Okay, so I've got my pink. Now I'm gonna roll out my paintbrush, try to get that color out, and now I'm gonna go get, did I say orange? Yeah, yes. let's do orange. I wonder how close to pink it's gonna look though. We're gonna test it out. If I don't care for how different it looks, I might go red. So now I'm, whoop, I'm doing the orange now, and I'm gonna flick it. Oh, the orange looks different. That was good. Oh, I like it. It I looks like kind of like jungle grass. It's jungle party grass. You know, it's like somebody's having a birthday party with like streamers. And there we've got that. Oh, I like this combination. Oh, I like it too. Oh, I think that was the combination I used on my example. But there was some pink streaks in there. So now I've got all this. If I want to have a couple of blades of grass in front of my trunk, sneaked over there. Oh, I did some blades of grass. Yeah, in front of my I did trunk. a little more on mine, huh? Okay. I think mine's feeling pretty good. Okay, so that's about all the paint you want to use. Now, there's one other thing you can do if you want. If you want it to look like there's teeny, teeny, tiny flowers in it, what I do is I take another color, like maybe yellow, I'll shake it up. And now, rather than using my, my paintbrush uh, hairs, I take the end with the wood and I tap it in there and I put a few dots like this, you see? It's an option. You don't have to do it. I don't have it in that example, but I've done it on other examples. And Ooh, you just I'm going to do that. that. You want them to be really tiny. So one dip gave me six dots. So, you know, one Ooh, dip goes a long way. This bright red. So there are my little dots of flowers. Oh, red. oh, maybe I'll do a few dots of red. Here. Oh, okay. sure. Okay, let's do That's a great idea. Okay, so I'm just going to go like that and get a few dots. Okay, I think that's plenty. So you don't want to overdo it. Take a closer look. I see it there. Okay. So now we are ready to take a break from the paint. Awesome. That looks great. Okay, don't overdo it. You don't want so many. Okay, there. so I'll take that. Now we are done with the paint. We're done with the brushes, but set them here and we'll make sure we wash them after we're done with the project. And now we're going to the colored pencils. Nope, we're doing the leaves next, and then we're gonna detail with the colored pencils. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you're gonna need your glue stick now and your leaves. Okay, so I like it when mine have a lot of the same kind of leaves. So, we have uh, these that are from a shrub. I forgot, I think these are called dwarf shrubs or something. These like that. that are from roses. Yeah, you got a lot of good rose ones. I'm thinking, do you want the rose ones? Yes. Okay, so what you're gonna do is, if they have a little stem to them like this. Pick them apart. No, no, leave the stem on because now you can make it look like it attaches to the stem, if you want. Well, I had like six on the stem, so. Okay, now, you notice that these leaves are green. Well, when leaves are alive or just, you know, you know, still basically living, they're green. But what happens when they die? Well, we have some backup here. Well, they turn brown. So that don't worry. All I want to do is get you Stop ready here. for what yours is gonna look like in a couple weeks. We to do a couple have months. a couple of some just brown yeah. but yellow ones. Let me tell them what's gonna happen in a couple of weeks to a month. Every one of these leaves, when I glued it here, and this is an old example, used to be green. They were green when I put it on there, and then they turned to brown after they dried up and died. So yours will look brown later. So it starts out green. So since this green is really close to black, you don't see it that much right now, but later it'll turn brown and it'll be really light like this on top of a dark background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, you know what else I didn't mention? Oh, you know what we could do? This one, I just have it plain. But advanced people, if you wanted to, you could add like mountains in the background, keep them black and add a little orange. 
you know, or a color for a sunset. But I'm gonna keep it to the simple thing because we've got lots to do. So I'm gonna be using these leaves and Lily's But you can them. add mountains if you want to your own. Yes, you can make it your own. So on this, so right here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to be using these teeny tiny petals. So I'm going to take those off and pull a bunch of them apart. Yes, so, this is when your glue stick is gonna come into play. Yes, so get your leaves separated and ready to be glued. So what you need to do is kind of pick them apart if they're all hooked together. And mine were all hooked together because I just took mine off of a shrub. So now I start like that, and mmm. Oh, here are some more of those tiny leaves. Oh, I love all these. Okay, so I pull them all apart, and I have like that. Now, to glue them, I'm gonna lay this down and let you look at it, because it's easier to press when I have it on the table. So I'm moving all my, my leaves up. And if you have any leaves like here where some of the leaf is cut off, you can still use it. Now the best thing to do with the leaves to make it look like real is to put one at the tip of every branch. So I'm just gonna rub my glue stick and I don't wanna put glue all over it because the space between it is going to have a different shine than the black paper. But I'm gonna put a glue on the tip of all of these. I might have, uh, let's see what I've got. I might have some that are big and some, some are smaller. The or you can have like stuff this. on like yeah. towards the side of the tip or something. Yeah, so I start by just putting um, them on the tip. You might have bigger leaves, but I press down my leaf and I really press it down. And also, put your leaves on fast because the glue does dry fast. So let's start by putting one at the end of every branch tip. Then I'll show you what to do after that. So you can go ahead, like Lily said, she's just just rubbing a little glue at the end of every tip. Then she's taking her leaves and sticking them on the gluey spot before the glue dries. Of course. Okay. So let's see how quickly we can get this together. I have a lot of tips because remember, I drew a lot of branches. So it just depends on how you did it. And it's okay if you overlap some leaves because that's what normal trees do. They yeah, overlap yeah. leaves. Okay, so I've got one side done just with the tips. So now I'm going to do the other side so you can see how that looks. So I just went and glued, 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 glued right next to the tips. Now I'm going to put a leaf down on each and then I'm going to move my way up. Sometimes I gotta pull the little stems that hook to the leaves because they make it hard to flatten them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. But different plants have different kinds of leaves, obviously. And some of them, the leaves will flatten out easier. Those are the leaves you really wanna use. Now, if you do need any art supplies, like I was saying before, this black paper wasn't on my supply list before, but it is now. I just forgot to put it on there, and a lot of people were asking me, where do you get that black paper? It's actually not construction paper, even though you like to refer to it. It's just like paper that people use to print on or, um, you know, use for their scrapbooking. It's like black printer paper. Yeah, it's kind of like black cardstock almost. But things show up really cool on it. And it's more opaque than construction paper. That's why I like it. Okay, so let's see. Oh, I, I, had just, I had just the right amount of leaves. You did? Yeah. I, you don't have any more? No. Nope. You might have to run outside and get a few more. I had just the right amount of leaves. You might have to go get some more. I'm serious because we're doing a little bit more. Oh. Lily's going to go in there. I can use a different variety. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, you can, but because you think there aren't any smaller ones? What? Yeah, you can use it. Go ahead and mix it up. Do your thing. Yeah, okay, so next. So I've got mine like this, but my leaves are so small that I'm going to be able to add more. 
Tom's so if you use if you use tiny leaves like from a bush like I did, then what you're gonna do is near that you're gonna add two more next to each one. So I'll show you what that looks like. That looks like here and here. So see the ends are all singular, but now I'm gonna add two more next to the ends if I can. Now you don't wanna just put your uh, leaves anywhere. You wanna make them look like they're actually coming off that branch, right? So to do that, you're gonna have to get the point of your leaf near the branch. Okay, so let's see how we can do. Let's just go at it. So Lily, go and figure out which other kind of leaves you would like. Okay. And you can have some leaves coming from the trunk of the tree, like here, some leaves are coming off from the trunk, so you can have them um, anywhere. Here and there and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Those are the words of uh, one of my idols, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> what, what book is that? I don't know. Fox in a Box or whatever. Socks in a Box? What, what no, was Fox that and Socks. Fox and Socks. Egg. Or was that like green eggs and ham? Sam I am? I don't remember which one was which. It's been a while. Okay. We are cruising now. Getting all of our little leaves. It's kind of meditative, if you know what I mean. It's like we're repeating the same, you know, uh, instructions, the same direction, the same movement. Every time we're just gluing and pressing leaves. It's not a frustrating thing. It's not that, you know, it's a simple thing that we repeat and uh, you can kind of relax and just let your mind chill for a while and just glue leaves. Okay. It's looking good, Lily. Make yeah. sure that that comes from a branch somehow. Or it could come from the trunk of the tree. Yeah, but just don't, don't want it to be totally floating. Okay. I better get a lot of leaves on this. Okay. Yep, I'm getting there, I'm getting my tree full. Okay, this is why I took this whole sprig from outside. Also, but if you do, also if you don't want to um, just put glue on the paper, you can uh, put glue on the back of the leaf. Oh, you could. Like straight on the leaf and then stick it, but do whatever you feel is best for you. Yeah, experiment, see which way you like it better. You know, because there isn't always one way. No. There's always different ways. Okay. I think I'm getting close to having enough leaves. Let's see. I'm sure I'm going a little faster than you guys at home. I just want to be able to get to the next part. But, you know, this is a project that if you want to spend a lot of time detailing it, you can either just pause it or you can watch the whole video and then go back and take your time to detail it. I don't know if I have enough yet, but I'm gonna take a look here in a minute and see if I feel like if I have enough, um, you know, leaves all over my tree. Cause overall this tree, exa this example over uh -huh. here, the there are, are um, in between the leaves and on the tree branches, there are um, some, there are some like places where you can put like flower buds, yeah. like little stems. So you don't want to fill up your entire tree covered in leaves and just not have any room to put anything. Yeah, but we can squeeze it in. Trust me, squeezing things in. Oh wow, mine's looking pretty cool. I think I think the more I get leaves on, better. Okay, so far mine looks, oh that one, sometimes I'll get a leaf that doesn't want to go flat at all. So I need to like, uh, edit it out and then get another one. Okay, let's see if I can get a big flat one right here. I think I'm done. 
Okay. Let me see if I can get one more that's, oh, it's gonna fit in here good. Okay, whoops, I just took one off with my sticky finger. Okay, so this is how mine's looking, like this. See how many leaves I got on it? It's amazing. So next one I'm this going to do. This is mine, this is what mine looks like. You know what? I like how this one gets filled all the way to the edges. I think I'm gonna add some more. I really do, okay? I so, don't really have much space. Okay. So I'm just gonna leave it as it. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna get mine way out here. I just gotta find some flat ones. Okay, there's a flat one. Then I'm gonna add some out here. I wanna just really fill mine. Kind of like it's going all off oh, the edges. Oh, and then you're gonna add more like leaves and branches here. Yeah, with a pencil. So you, you, next we're gonna be using the colored pencils. So get your, go ahead and get some more leaves in really quick and then get ready to do the next step, which is using the colored pencils. So this and this. Find your little color you want. Yeah, fig, figure out, look at the picture. See how we're gonna add some baby branches and swirls and berries? Mm -hmm. Pick a couple of colored pencils you really like and want those colors in your artwork. Okay, I might add more, but oh, that one doesn't want to stick. It's too curly. I hate those ones. Okay, I want like some flat leaves. Here comes a flat leaf. Okay, so now I have about this many. That's a lot. So now I'm gonna pick my two colors I want to use. Will be. I picked my two colors. Will be this color and this like magenta okay. color. I'm gonna pick green and yellow. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next, you see over here, I've got little swirls and berries. So my berries are gonna be yellow, and all my swirls and mini branches are gonna be green. So watch me make one. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little piece right here, a little branch with a pencil, and I'm gonna put a yellow berry or yellow bud on it. Kinda like that. So I'm gonna add those all over the place. And if you need to re-glue any of your leaves because you think they're like sticking out too much or they just flop back on their own, then yeah. you can do that because I'm doing that right now. Yeah, you can also do this. See how the little swirls? If you'd like those, you can add a few of those. So I'm going to start adding those in because I want to fill in all my space. See the little swirls? I'm gonna put like 10 of those throughout. Wow. But I'm remember, gonna... the swirl has to branch off of, a, or come off of a branch. Like that. Ooh, some of these here are coming out of the trunk. Well, that's fine. That's a branch. Well, that's like a branch, but. Yeah. I'm gonna do 10 scattered out throughout uh, my picture, also with the swirls. Okay. Then I'm going to make more of these little buds. So that's like a little mini branch with my colored pencil and a little oval on top. So you might have those, I got a few over here. One here and one over here. So I've got these all over the place. Just building up the details. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, you don't have to do exactly 10, but you know. These are gonna be my little buds. So you see, I've got all these. I'm gonna have some over here. I don't know, do I need more color? I feel like I could use some red and orange in my tree. So I think I'm gonna switch it up and I'm gonna have some red berries too. So I'm gonna have some little, oh, I'm gonna do that with green. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put some more of these little stems, but I'm gonna have red berries in it. So I'm gonna put those, or I might just go, oh, I'm gonna put the berries wherever I feel like. And then I'm gonna connect this somehow to a branch. Find a way to connect it. I'm gonna do the same thing That might too. be easier. Then I put a stem and a stem and a stem, and a stem. I think it's looking rather cool. And you can make uh, your berries as big as you want them, as small as you want them. However way 
nyugodtan. Wow, now look at my tree. I think I'm gonna put a few more leaves. I'm gonna have Ooh, some branches. High. Yeah, if I had a few uh, leaves that didn't have a branch to get to the tree with, I'm gonna fix those. And now I think I wanna add a few more leaves. So I'm gonna go here and here. So I just drew some branches with a colored pencil. And now I'm gonna add a few leaves to those. Let's see if I've got another flower. And over here. There's one. And there's one. Wow. This is a lot, but it looks cool when you have a lot. I think. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Wow, God, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it and have a lot of them because I'm waiting for Lily, so that means I might be waiting for a few of you at home. See how many I've got? It's crazy. But that's because I pulled this whole sprig and I have plenty of leaves. Or you could draw some leaves if you want. Yeah. I'm, I'm drawing done. some more branches because I wanna have more leaves. Yeah, I'm done. You're done? Yeah. Okay. So, so now go ahead and, um, now I'm gonna show you some options, some more advanced things. If you wanna make a bug, you can zoom in uh, right over here. Yeah. I've got a little bug with little now, wings. Yeah, now you can add any other creative things you want to yeah. your tree, creative to elements. your environment. Yes, I'm gonna add a few more things to, a few more elements to mine. And I'm gonna show you guys. Let me put my last few leaves on. I've got one there. Uh, let's see, here's one here. And here's one here. And I think I can do one right. Woo! I just took a little sprig. Okay, here's one here. Okay, now I have this many leaves. So now I'm gonna show you how to do like uh, a dragonfly or butterfly or something. You, I'm taking two leaves that are uh, about the same or, size. Or, or you could just take one leaf like it. what I'm doing and split it in half oh, very carefully. Yeah, but I'm gonna split this brown one right here. Just like oh, this. Mine ripped. Ooh, mine ripped. It's okay. okay. You could glue it back together. Or you can glue it on the page. Okay, so I have these two close together leaves like this. I'm gonna make them the same size. So I'm gonna hold them up to each other and make sure that they I break them at the same place, which is here. So now I'm gonna make this into a dragonfly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put glue right here. It's gonna be a dragonfly flying by the tree. I'm making a butterfly right now. You are? Okay, so I'm putting two of these here. And then I'm gonna draw the body. So the body of mine, I'm gonna make, ooh, I'm gonna make orange. So this one right here, this is gonna become dragonfly. I need to have a long body, right? And a little head and antennas. And there's my dragonfly. If I want to, I can make the head a color. Like I'm gonna make the head like red or some other color. And then maybe I'm going to add some lines on its back. So there's my little dragonfly right here. Maybe I should put a little butterfly on the other side. Let's see what I can do for a butterfly. Oh, I have these really teeny tiny leaves, so let's see if I can get it together here. Um, okay, let's see. First I'll lay it out. I'll go like, oh, I can have two that are like this, and then one up here. Do I have another one that size? Maybe. No, it's too curly. Oh, here's two bigger ones. No, I still have this and this. I've got all kinds of leaves to left. And I could always go outside, okay, and get some more. Okay, so I've got two little leaves and two big leaves. 
So this is gonna be my butterfly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some glue down here where I thought it would go, just like this. Okay, so I put the two small ones on the bottom. Oh my gosh, my dragonfly and my butterfly are all flying in the same direction, so maybe they're having a, a get together here. Okay, so then a little more glue here, and a little more glue here. And this is going to be my butterfly, but I'm gonna use blue on this one, and I'm gonna have a blue body, and I'm gonna have blue antennas with little white tips on the ends. Maybe I'll make the body white. It'll show it better. Alrighty, so this one over here is my butterfly, and this one's my dragonfly. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, I think it looks pretty cool. I think I'm done. What do you think, Lily? I'm still doing my butterfly. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I like this as a side view. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna show you how to finish this up and a few options you can do. So the next thing I'll do is I will peel the blue tape off and I'll do it really, oh. care whoops, really carefully. So I don't want my leaves to fall off. Cause they're not, the glue isn't completely dry. My glue isn't completely dry when I color over it. It's not really great. Oh. Um, so once I get my tape off, I'll show you this look. It looks cool. Okay, I think. Okay, so mine is looking like this. But if for any reason I accidentally didn't put enough glue under one of the leaves, when it's dry tomorrow, it might fall off. But they might stay forever. This one I made years ago, and it's still hanging on. But what I wanna do is show you an option that I'm gonna center my, I'm gonna get this on here a little bit better than I did at first when I brushed and got it on. Okay, whoops. So I'm gonna make sure this is on and matching the cardboard. And then down here, it's good and on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it in plastic wrap so that it never, you know, the leaves never fall off. So watch what I do. I'm gonna move this over and I'm going to put the glue lid back on, that's important. And I'm going to get my little plastic wrap. This one I get is called Stretch Tight. I like it because it's really stretchy. So, what I'm gonna do is take that and some tape. These are extra, extra things you could do if you want. Most people have a little plastic wrap in the kitchen and some scotch tape. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this all the way over, like that. And I'm gonna cut it so that I have just enough, but I don't want tons extra. So I'm gonna do this and I'm going to Now, I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna line it up and make sure that it's covering. This, you might need a parent's help for. So, I make sure I can have some plastic on either side, and then I pull it tight. And I do what it says here, I stretch it tight. I feel like I'm doing a Liza Koshy thing. <laughs> so anyways, making some puns here. Yeah, making puns. Okay, so I'm going to tape one end of the plastic like this while Lily's detailing hers. I made a little bead. And I make sure that a little bit hangs off of each side, side to side. And then I'm gonna flip it around. Now I'm gonna make sure a little still hangs off each side. It's pretty close with my 11 inch white paper, but I'm doing it. So now I've got that. Now I'm gonna pull it as tight as I can. As tight as I can around these, just like that. Got some tape stuck to my hands. Okay, I can pull it a little tighter. So I'm gonna pull it a little bit tighter. Okay. So I pulled it really tight and I'm gonna roll up the extra on the back. And I'm gonna tape the opposite end down. 
just like this. And I'm really taking this tape and pulling it on. So far, it looks like this, but it's got all these wrinkles in it. So now I'm gonna get rid of those wrinkles by stretching it side to side. And how I do that is like this. I get this cellophane tape, and I put a little on the edge like this. And I go and I wrap it around the back. So I do this, I take a little more tape and I wrap it around the back. Do that here, wrap and it around the back. And this is what mine looks like. Whoa! So we'll leave yours without plastic so we can show the difference. This is just fun, but like I said, you're probably gonna need your parents' help with this. This one's fun because it'll keep the leaves from ever falling off your art until you, if you decide, you might wanna get a frame for it. And you might not. But I stretch this stuff so there's no wrinkles. I just put a piece of cellophane tape and I stretch it around. Go to the corner. Hey, that's what it's for, a stretch tight. Yep. When you need something, stretch tight. Okay. And the only corner that looks really wrinkled is this one. So I'm gonna and take- that one too. Oh, that one too. So I gotta add tape to those corners. It's kind of like we're shrink wrapping it or something. Mm -hmm. But we're tightening it up. Okay, let's see. And when it you're done- It looks like you're putting resin over it. And when you're done, yeah, it looks like I've got the glass resin over it. And it gets nice and tight. Nice and shiny. And shiny. And no one can take your leaves off of it now. Unless they unwrap the tape from it. Yes. So, I hope you had fun making this project. And Lily and I, I kinda, I love how yours turned out. And I love your grass too, with the little dots. Oh my gosh, is that a bee? Yeah. That's super cute. She's got a bee and a butterfly. I love the angle of that butterfly. Me, I've got my dragonfly and my butterfly and all my leaves on my tree. And we've gotten to do uh, this amazing multimedia uh, project inspired by that contemporary artist, Fred Tomaselli. Please look up his art. Google all the artists we, we mention as inspiration in our lessons so that you can learn even more about them. And um, tomorrow's project, I'm, I'm not even going to bring out an example because it's really simple. Friday, every Friday I'm going to call it uh, found, found Object, object Friday. Friday. That's where you're going to follow me throughout the home where You get I a little want, house tour of our house too. I guess so, yeah. And we are going to find two to three objects that I'm going to put on this table and we are going to learn how to draw together. Oh. And before you know it, you can draw anything you see. With a few little tips and tricks, um, it'll be great to build those skills every Friday. And it'll be fun, and if we have extra time, I'll do a drawing game with you too. So I wanna thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and... Click the bell icon, the yes. notification button, to and see more of our art videos. Yeah, and keep making cool, cool art. art.